Hi. Hello. Lisa, how are you? Hey, Peter. I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, I'm good. We were live there for a few seconds and I didn't even realize it. <laughs> are you in a broom cupboard? Uh, I am, yeah. Um, kind of like Harry Potter, how he lived under the stairs. Um, I, uh, it's a closet. Um, it's nice because there's no light that gets in from the outside, so I don't know what time of day it is, it is in here. Um, <laughs> you haven't been in there for days, right? You, you actually, you must be aware of time of the time. I'm, I'm sorry? You haven't been in there for a few days, right? You, you, you do understand it's the morning. <laughs> right, yeah. No, it's the yeah. morning. That's right, yeah. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Okay, well, look, good to see you again. We're going to talk about lightning. Okay, we're going to yeah, tell little pe uh, people about what's been going on with lightning, where we're at with it, talk about how uh, taproot activation relates to it. Um, you're going to handhold me through the more technical bits, which I really appreciate. Uh, but how have you been? Are you well? I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm very well. Um, yeah, doing pretty good here in Texas. Um, yeah, weather's been real great. It's nice. Yeah, we've got good weather here for... for for a rare time here. So listen, let's start with, just let people know a bit about yourself, how you got into being a Lightning developer. Um, yeah, so I, I got into Bitcoin, um, I'm gonna get the year wrong here probably, I wanna say 2018. Um, I, uh, I started with the Squares Cash App team working on their backend. So I was doing like basically custodial Bitcoin, wallet coding, um, it's all in Java there. Um, and then got really interested in kind of, I got interested in some like random thing and ended up emailing Rusty Russell of Sea Lightning. Um, didn't really know much about Lightning at the time, but it was kind of asking him a different question about like a thing in like how a thing in like the Bitcoin protocol worked. Um, and he mentioned that Blockstream was trying to hire for a Sea Lightning job. Um, and was curious if I was interested in applying. And I sent him several messages back that were like, look, man, I just started this job at Square. I don't know anything about C or anything about Lightning. I really don't think I'm the person you're looking for. Um, but, you know, since you seem interested, I will definitely, I would be happy to apply. You know, it's an application process. I will go through your application process and then give you the courtesy of telling me no. Um, and they didn't tell me no. So that's how I got hired to work on Lightning at Blockstream. Is no Fantastic. one told me no. Um, no one told you no. Well, awesome. And, and what is it specifically you've been working on with regards to lightning? Yeah, so the project I've been working on for the past, I guess, couple of years at this point has been um, changing the spark to add um, the ability to dual fund a lightning channel at open. What does that mean? Um, I'm sorry, what does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? What does a dual fund a channel mean? Could you, sorry, could you just repeat that sorry, one? Sorry, you, you said you've been working on the ability to dual fund a channel? Yeah, so that has to do with how Lightning, do we want to get into how Lightning yeah. works right now? Okay, Let's great, Let's go for it. Um, yeah, so right now, um, for those of you who are familiar with Lightning, you open channels between two nodes, and then once a channel is open, you can send funds between, it kind of creates this like pathway, personal pathway that two nodes can then exchange funds. Um, right now, the way that the protocol is written, um, and a protocol is basically just kind of like step back a second, like when you say protocol, what am I talking about? It's a set of canned messages. It's basically like having like programmatic or automatic text set up. So like when you're like, hey, I want to do like X, Y, Z thing, like I want to open a channel. There's like a canned set of messages that you pull out. And then those are the messages that the two nodes send back and forth to each other. And once that canned message conversation is done, it's basically, it's two robots, two robots talking and you write out what each of the robots is gonna say back and forth. And then at the end of it, um, you have everything you need to open a channel, which in Lightning's case, what does it mean to open a channel? It means that you have a transaction or you have a, you have a, a transaction and one of those outputs um, locks the, is a two of two output with money from like one of the nodes, right? So that's opening a channel, is broadcasting a transaction with a special output. So you, so you have the, so anyway, start, so when you're opening a channel, you start a conversation with another node, it's a canned conversation. And at the end of the canned conversation, one of you broadcasts a, fun, a transaction with an output in it. Um, cool. Okay, so right now, the way that that can conversation works, only one of the nodes can put money into that transaction. Only one of the nodes builds that transaction. 
that you end up broadcasting that's the funding transaction for the channel it kind of starts the whole ability to have lightning payments um so my project has been taking that can conversation that these two robotic nodes have with each other and changing the conversation so we're rewriting the script for how these nodes talk to each other um, and the, what we're, the goal of rewriting the script, like why would you sit down and rewrite the script? The goal of rewriting the script is that um, at the end of it, instead of one node adding funds to the channel at the beginning, both nodes would be able to put money into the channel. So um, kind of what this means is they're collaboratively building a transaction. Um, and at the end of it, you end up with a transaction that has inputs and outputs that belong to both nodes. And in addition to that, you also have this special output that just so happens to open a channel. Um, and so what's cool about that is that currently um, any channel that you open in Lightning, any channel only has funds for one party at the very start. So if you want to send money in the other direction, you're like out of luck. You can't do it. Dual funded channels, if you go through this process of building the transaction together, means that both channel, both sides have the opportunity to start with funds in the channel. So it's more balanced to begin with. So payments can like flow both directions just for, like just out of the gate, which is really exciting. Is it one of those things whereby I, as just a standard user, won't know what's going on? This is just stuff you've built in the background to make it all easier for <laughs> you developers. And so money can flow better. And I've got no idea what's going on. That's pretty much right, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Like I said, there can conversations between two robots and if the conversation works out the way that it is, at the end of the day, you end up with an open channel. Um, if you're lucky or hopefully it's got money in both directions so people can send you money and you can send out money all in the same channel and it was just the same normal opening process that you normally go through. Okay, great. So what is the general status of Lightning at the moment? You know, we hear lots of different things that you know, it's still very early, it's still beta, it's, you should still, you know, treat it like, you know, uh, cautiously, don't put any money in it that you don't want to lose, you know, but be a little bit reckless, like, where are we right now with Lightning? Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, I hate this question. Um, I know, but I love asking it. Uh, yeah, I hate it, and the reason I hate it is, like, like, ready for who? Um, like, who are we talking about? Like, Me. is it ready for you? For Pe Oh, Me. is it ready for Peter? For uh, Peter. This is like, I'm kind of, I want to be like, I don't know, Peter, like, are you ready for lightning? Um, like, I think I am. Well, okay, so I think stuff like, so like, I think kind of like, if you look at stuff like Strike, so I think Strike yeah. is, which is the wallet is made by, I think, I was going to say his name wrong, Jack Maulers. Jack um, I always want to call him Zach, because his first thing was Zap, and so it's like. I think we also have to mention Rockstar Dev as well, he's been heavily involved. And Rockstar Dev, it's a it's a collaborative project, yeah. anyways. But I think the thing about so like the thing about Strike and the reason I bring it up when people like is red lightning ready is because I think Strike is doing the right thing for I'm gonna I don't really know you that well, Peter, so I hate to make assumptions, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna assume for people like yourself and that it uses lightning as a payments rail it makes it possible to send payments really quickly and fast but it hides the whole part about how they're getting sent and who's who's managing the money and how it's like how it got from point a to point b all you know is that you're able to send payments around the globe very quickly right which i think is kind of one of the like um promises that lightning makes and, and mm -hmm. as far as like the fact that strike exists and you can use it today I think that Lightning is like ready for that because it exists, right? Um, so I think like, so then so then you kind of end up on a spectrum, right? Like of, okay, are we ready for people to build like consumer grade projects that use the Lightning network? It seems like Strike already exists and is doing that. So like to some extent, I'm like, yes, that seems like a thing that it's reasonable to expect on the Lightning network these days. Um, uh, but um, <laughs> the, what do you call it? Um, but then I think, I, I don't know if that's exactly what you mean though, like is lightning ready for- uh, I think what I mean is like, I have no fears of using the base chain. So if I was like after this session, I'm like, wow, Lisa's so cool. I'm gonna send her a Bitcoin. Like I'll be like, Lisa, give me a dress. I'll send you a Bitcoin. I've got no fear, no worries. I don't think, uh, I just know it's gonna get to you. But I was, I was like, hmm, I've got a Bitcoin in my Lightning wallet. I was like, I'm going to send that to Lisa. I'm not sure it'd get there. I'm not sure I could send that much. Uh, I'm not sure, like, if things could go wrong. That's what I mean. I'm just, 
I, ha I have that 100% confidence in the base chain, but with Lightning, there's that, like a little bit of doubt. There is doubt, yep, and that's great. And maybe we should talk about why there's doubt, right? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think, so I think there's a couple of reasons why there's doubt. I think one, the first reason is that a lot of the, I think Lightning is fairly complicated as a payment rail, payment rail. Um, kind of like I was talking about, you kind of have to make sure balances are in the right way so you can send money. And if they're not in the right way or you don't have enough capacity to do the network, it'll fail. Part of the problem is the Lightning just in general is that we have kind of have no idea right now if a payment will succeed until we try it. So until you walk up and you push the button and say, hey, I want to send one Bitcoin to Lisa, please figure out how to do that. The network doesn't know if that's possible until it tries. Um, so that is like, that introduces kind of like a certain amount of like failure because there, we don't like, you can't know until you try it sort of thing is great for, I think a certain amount of science, but payments, people want you like, want zero question into whether or not this payment is going to go through, right? It's just like, I want to walk up to the ATM or whatever and push the button and have the money come out or go in. And I don't want to have to ever think about it, right? It's kind of like the um, thing. So I think, I think that to a certain extent, getting lightning to a point where every payment that you make always goes through every time is going to require a little bit more infrastructure. Um, and that's going to look a little bit and that, I think that's, and by infrastructure, I don't mean necessarily on the base level. I don't think that's something we can ever really get rid of in the protocol at the protocol level, um, because in order to do that, it trades off. So like the trade off that you're looking at there is privacy or um, reliability, right? So because we've given people a lot of privacy, we can't guarantee reliability. And I think at the base level, that's not going to change. Um, Unfortunately, what that means to some extent is there's almost like this little middle layer that's like, I wouldn't say missing, but hasn't been totally solved yet, is how to figure out a way to kind of look at, you know, kind of keep track of the network or something or have enough of your own, like, um, I don't know, trusted, but like routes that you know and manage that always work, um, that allows like some third party to kind of patch that gap or like, I don't know if patch that gap is the right word, um, but yeah. like sort of like abstract over the um, unpredictability of the underlying network in such a way that you as a user don't ever see it. Um, and we've had some, I think, really good progress towards making this more of a reality with like um, MPP, which is multi-part payments. Um, so this means it used to be there had to be a single path of like one Bitcoin. If you wanted to send me a Bitcoin, we needed a single path that had the entire Bitcoin available along the whole way. MVP allows us to, instead of having, if maybe you don't have one whole Bitcoin like as a whole path, but you have four paths and each of them has a quarter of a Bitcoin, I can send a quarter of a Bitcoin through four different paths at the same time. Um, so MVP gives us that. Um, so the main issue is the, the, the liquidity oh. through the channels. Um, could you repeat that? I'm really sorry. That's okay. So the main the, the main uh, issue, the main reason a transaction might fail is there's not a li enough liquidity through the channels. But that's, that's right. That, but that will improve with time, right? As more people go onto the network. I think it'll improve with time. I think it'll improve as things like the dual funding proposal um, channels start opening with more capacity in both directions, which means that as this, at start you can send payments a lot more places. Um, I think also stuff such as slicing will help a lot. I think that, so this is kind of like the problem, like the general umbrella of liquidity management as like a problem, right? Um, and I think that that is something that's an active place that tools are being developed. Um, mm -hmm. Like Lightning Pool is, I think pretty good for that also, because it allows people who care about managing their liquidity, the opportunity to go and like source it in kind of a marketplace sort of thing. So I think we're still, and that just launched in November. I mean, that's, I guess that's like five months ago at this point, but it's still really well, new. So I think you we're, explain we're what, still seeing. Do you, do you want to explain what lightning pool is so people yeah, understand? Yeah, I can understand. Yeah, I can totally explain it. So um, the general idea with lightning pool is that you have Again, so this goes back to the problem of liquidity. When I open a channel, all of my funds are on one side. And if I wanted to send payments in the other direction, you're just out of luck. So 
the idea with lightning pool is that oh and so it's, it's really hard if you're a node all you can do is open channels to other people so if you're a node operator it's really easy to open channels to other people and be able to send payments out it's hard to convince someone else to open a channel to you with money in it right so this is the general problem that we're trying to solve with pool so Pool is basically a way, if I'm a node and I want channels sending money my direction, I want people to open channels to me with money on their side already so that people who aren't me can send money through them to get to me, right? So Pool is basically, a, creates a marketplace and it's got a nice auction mechanism that um, allows people to kind of establish a price that they're willing to open a channel to me um, putting money, basically committing funds in my direction so I can get payments into me. Um, so basically this allows a node that in the past, you know, so like I said, I can control pretty easily the money going out. It's harder for me to get money coming back in. So pool gives me a place that I can go to like a marketplace and bid basically on people to create channels to me um, for different amounts of stuff. And they've done a nice job of um, contracts, building contracts Kind of like in the options marketplace. So I recently got into like how options work in the stock market. Um, one of the like really um, one of the really nice things that makes options the options market possible is that they've standardized the contract. So every options contract in um, for equities, which is stocks, is about a hundred pieces of that like hundred shares, right? So when you buy one options contract, it's always a hundred shares. Um, there's only a certain number of dates that those options can expire on and those are kind of set by, I'm not really sure who those are set by, but basically when you're buying and selling a contract for options, it's like um, they're standardized contracts. Lightning Pool has done a similar thing for um, this, in, is we'll call it inbound liquidity. So by creating a marketplace on an auction, they also have like, okay, I'm going to buy, and I can't remember how many blocks it's for. I'm going to guess, like, I'm guessing here. I think it's like 4,000 blocks. So the person who's, you're paying them to open this channel with you and put, let's say, one Bitcoin in it. So one Bitcoin of inbound liquidity. Um, and that contract that you pay them for is like for 4,000 blocks or whatever. Um, Right. How does how does Taproot change things for Lightning? Obviously, I've been talking to Andrew about that, about the activation, the drama has been involved in that. Um, is, is there a lot of uh, extra side work that has to be done within the Lightning protocol to uh, uh, to which which has to be built alongside Taproot? Because I'm not sure if Taproot like screws things up for Lightning. Like, obviously, I'm not a developer, so I don't know. What's the deal there? Yeah. So Taproot. Taproot is a big opportunity for Lightning to become more private um, okay. and better hide the fact that you're using Lightning in the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, I think there's other big things that we're going to get by adopting Schnorr signatures, which isn't necessarily Taproot, and it's not really related to the main chain, but for reasons related to um, just kind of wanting to be standardized around whatever it is that the Taproot stuff adopts. We've been waiting until that's like landed until we update some of our other stuff, like other signature stuff, which isn't necessarily related to the Bitcoin blockchain, but is will use some of the same primitives and like star signatures, like for example, um, to make certain kinds of gossip stuff a lot more compact and um, easy to verify, that sort of thing. Um, but like, um, I can talk more about like the privacy implications of Taproot do, yeah. for why it's okay. Yeah, so I think there's there's two things that I'm aware of, and I'm sure there's more that I'm missing. Um, but I think there's two big things that are pretty exciting about Taproot for Lightning. Um, the first one is that right now, when you make a Lightning um, transaction, so like the open transaction that creates this two of two output, it goes on chain to open a channel. Um, right now. When that channel closes, you have to publish the script that originally that originally opened it, if that makes sense, because of mm -hmm. how P2WSH works. Um, so right now, after the you've closed the channel, anyone can go through and see which what were lightning channels. And it's very easy to figure that out based on on chain, just like footprint of them. Tap root, tap script, I'm not really sure what the right new word for it is, will allow you to um, hide that fact because 
with Taproot or TapScript, a lot of what ends up on chain looks like any other signature. So instead of looking like, so right now, like Lightning um, outputs are fairly complicated scripts. They've got a decent amount of logic in them. Um, actually like smart contracts on Bitcoin is like Lightning. Um, <laughs> so these are like, you can see what the logic of the script is when the channel closes. Um, when we move to TapScript, it will just look like any other normal um, signature signed transaction. So it had like a, it had a, um, like a pub key and private key. It just looks like a pub key, private key, like signature thing normally. So I think that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, so on-chain footprint will hopefully largely disappear. So it'll just look like normal chain transactions. You won't be able to tell if someone's opening or closing a lightning transaction. That's the first part. The second thing I mentioned um, about, so the second thing that's pretty cool has to do with um, the way that funds are moved through um, lightning, like from lightning node to lightning node. So when you pass a little like onion ball down the lightning, <laughs> little onion, when you pass a little onions down the channel stuff to like make a payment, um, the that's basically involves updating a bunch of transactions along the way. So there's a bunch of little Bitcoin transactions that get changed and updated between each of the little hops as the onion rolls through all the nodes to get to its destination. There's little Bitcoin transactions getting updated at every row, at every spot, right? So the um, those transactions very rarely end up on chain. You don't want them to end up on chain, whatever. Um, so it's not really like, anyways. But one of the cool things is right now when your little onion ball hops from like node to node to node through all the channels to like ends up at the last place and drop off, you know, the payment. Um, as it rolls through, at each hop, there's something called, we use something called like a hash. So it's the HTLC is hash time lock contract, mm -hmm. I think, hash time lock mm -hmm. contract. Yeah. So we're, the idea is that you'll be able to move. So a hash, basically that hash is the same at every little node. So every little jump from channel to channel when the transactions change over at each spot, each of them is the same hash right now. So if someone for some reason was able to see um, each of these changes, they would be able to track where your payment is going. It's very hard to do. I don't even think it's like, I can't think of a way that's like technically possible, but if for some reason all of these channels ended up needing to go to chain all at the same time because of some terrible event, then you, people would be able to see where your, your payment had gone if for some reason they get um, go to chain or whatever. To know our taproot stuff lets us move to something called PTLC is my understanding. I think there's other ways to accomplish this that people are working on, but it, my, I think that TopScript makes it very easy. Um, is that it lets you, so the P stands for point time lock um, contracts so instead of hash, we're moving to a point. So instead of using a hash to unlock the um, the little, each of the things in each way, sorry, each of the, each individual little hop in the um, path can use a un, like uncorrelatable, like very distinct point. So each of these sections, instead of being able to like tie them all together because they have the same piece of data between each one, now each of them will have its very own separate little point that they're using at each, at each hop. Um, so you won't be able to tell if for some reason all of these ended up on chain. There's no way to look at everything that's on chain and say, oh, these were the same payment because they're using a different point instead of like the same hash. Um, I think okay. that's also like a snore, snore thing. That's great. Are, are, are there any other benefits that Lightning Network will be gaining from uh, Taproot outside of privacy? Outside of privacy. Um, I think it's like, I think there's like certain savings and I'm not the right person to ask this exactly. I think other okay. people can give you better answers. Um, based on what I've heard, I think there's like certain, um, there's some amount of space saving somewhere maybe, but I'm like totally talking off the cuff here, so. That's fine. I've got some uh, uh, some questions from people coming in, so I'm gonna read those to you as well. Um, <laughs> okay, is there any missing feature in Bitcoin Core that would help lightning development evolution? This is a good question. It's not something I've like, again, kept up with. Um, I think the thing that one of my teammates, Christian Decker, I talks about, or like th what I think of when I think of this, it's like the, um, we're still, I don't know if waiting is the right word, but um, looking to get the, I think, oh, what's the, it's the script sig, sig hash, no input. I think it's been renamed something else. Um, so basically there's a, there's a proposal for something called L2 in Lightning. Mm -hmm. 
this will change the way that punishment works. Um, so it basically has to do with like how many, how much backups do you need to save for your lightning node um, and kind of solves some of the problems that lightning nodes have around, you can't lose any information ever um, right now. So this is like, so the problem it's trying to solve is that lightning nodes have to remember a lot of stuff. And if you lose that stuff, you could lose all of your money in lightning channels possibly still anyways. Um, but uh, this like adding this um, certain SIG hash flag to Bitcoin Core will let us upgrade the mechanism we use for commitment transactions such that, um, what do you call it? Commitment transactions such that the state that you save can be compacted a lot. So it's a lot less stuff. And if you, for some reason, your hard drive gets corrupt and you lose your lightning database, um, your recovery from a backup isn't as um, devastatingly bad in terms of like monetary loss. So in terms of a lightning node, because I, I, I've recently, I, I know it's late and I get a lot of stick for this, but I've recently finally got myself my node fully synced. Mm -hmm. And my understand, my basic understanding of uh, how it works is it downloads uh, the blockchain and the blockchain itself is what, 350 gigabytes. But I think of it in terms of blocks. So in terms of lightning and my lightning node, what do I think of in terms of the data that's storing? Because it can't be in terms of blocks. It must be in terms of something else. That's a good question. It depends on okay. what your node is doing. Um, the thing- does it, stay, thinking, does it have the whole state? There's like, so there's like a, for every channel that you have open right now, Yeah. it has to save at least one commit, one, I have to save basically a Bitcoin transaction. So the data that a Bitcoin transaction is composed of, which is like bytes, right? Like hundreds mm -hmm. of bytes. Yeah, it's on the order of hundreds of bytes for a channel. I think, is that right? I think there's some other like metadata you might need to keep in terms of like keys, like which key you've used for that channel, for example, to unlock things. Um, you also have to save, so you have to save a, a, it's on the order of like maybe a kilobyte. I'm gonna get that wrong and someone else is gonna say, Lisa, that's terribly wrong and here's why and here's all the extra data that you have to keep also. But from a state perspective, you have to keep, you have to keep the current transaction and you really also wanna keep based on the current way that like stuff works. You also wanna keep like kind of a list of revocation keys that your peer has given you. But that's, okay. I don't know how big a key is, like 33 bytes or so. Um, times however many times you've had that channel change so it's within like i would say it's in the kilobyte range per channel so it's on a channel basis so you'd, you'd think about okay. it on a um how many channels do i have or have i had that i need to keep state around for okay okay so we might have time for one maybe two questions but we'll go with one for now um what who is the main competitor to layer two scaling in bitcoin if any and what is the dev position overall on Lightning Network in general? I think you've kind of answered the second part already. Okay. Um, but what other uh, uh, competitors for layer two scaling is there? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Let's say wrap Bitcoin, right? Uh, you can do it on a <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah. So I actually have, I gave a talk, I think, at like some conference last year about Lightning and comparing it to Liquid. Um, and I like I hate saying liquid, of course, because I, then I feel like I'm shilling for Blockstream. But I, yeah, liquid, of course. Um, but like, kind of, not really. It really depends on what you want to do. Um, I think that. So wait, are we talking about? And maybe you're like, so like I think when you talk about competitors, lightning. What are you talking about? Are you talking well, about like, I, what I, other? I think, I th yeah, I think competitor is the wrong word, really. I mean, I'm reading their questions as competitor, but I'm just, I think there's just multiple scaling options of which Rap Bitcoin is a scaling option. We can't deny it. Liquid yeah. is a scaling option. Uh, Lightning is a scaling option. Uh, yeah. Are there other ones that we should be aware of? And, you know. I mean, so I think a good way to think about, like, so, I, sorry, I'm kind of like a first principles person. So I okay. want to talk about, like, uh, when you talk about, like, so when you're talking about competitors, Usually then you want to look at, well, what's like doing a similar thing. And the core thing that like both Liquid and Lightning and Rep Bitcoin all have in common is that they build pools of Bitcoin that are then kind of kept in multi-sig, um, they kept in multi-sig UTXOs on the main blockchain. And then because you have that Bitcoin locked in that multi-sig UTXO thing, they build a second like accounting layer 
that keeps track of who owns the money inside that Bitcoin pool, right? This mm -hmm. is how any layer two stuff works, basically. In Lightning, the accounting is these little Bitcoin transactions that you keep off chain and you trade back and forth. It's kind of like Pokemon cards, whatever. Um, the, the accounting system in Liquid is a whole nother blockchain. It's the Liquid blockchain. But it's basically the accounting for liquid Bitcoin is just like who owns what portion of this like locked pool. It's like a multi-sig contract. Wrap Bitcoin is the same thing, except that the accounting mechanism is on Ethereum, right? Um, yeah. So I think like when you're looking at when you're looking at L2 things or you're evaluating what do I think of the scaling option, it's who are the multi-sig participants um, for that pool of Bitcoin that you're creating? Do you trust them? Do you know how to get your money out of it? And two, and like the other thing then is like, how, what do you think of their accounting system? Is it a good accounting system? Does it seem like that accounting system will keep track of who and what and how much Bitcoin you were like owed in that like pool? So. Fair enough. Well, we've come to the end of our session. Um, I've learned more. I know more about Lightning since, uh, since I did uh, 35 minutes ago. So thank you, Lisa. Uh, hopefully we'll have a chance to catch up soon. Um, and yeah, I think it's now time for the morning break, but thank you for your time, Lisa. Cool, thank you. Yeah. Bye. Awesome conversations. Awesome conversations. Uh, very interested to know what's coming on Taproot and also these cool technical things on Lightning Networks. Yeah, thanks, Peter, Lisa, and Andrew. Um, we're going to have a brief break and we'll resume in 10 minutes. So take this opportunity to join us on Discord and also on Gather Tao. Um, we'll be back at 11 a.m.